Hello, everybody, and welcome to Digital Illustration and Storytelling with Jeff Wilson. This is our March 2022 edition. Really glad that everyone can join us. And uh, yeah, thanks again for uh, taking the time to join us and be part of these, uh, these workshops, these online workshops. Uh, my name is Tom Stranat. I'm the uh, lead digital artist of the Creator Space, and I'm, I'm again really glad you can join us. And thanks for Jeff for uh, taking the time to do these, and really appreciate that. Just want to start off and uh, just thank all our partners in this project: uh, Canada Council for the Arts. Then we have our library partners: so Blue Mountains Public Library, Collingwood Public Library, Wasaga Beach Public Library. And in terms of equipment, we have the iPads that are available at all three libraries. So the Procreate software that we're Jeff is demonstrating with an iPad you can take out just with your uh, uh, with your library card. So you take it out just like a book and then it's all loaded and we hope you can access those at all three of our library partners that is available. So without any further ado, I'm going to pass it over uh, to to Jeff here uh, and he's going to take us through today's session. So here we go. Here's Jeff. Yes. Okay, th thank you again, Tom, and uh, welcome everyone. I hope your uh, your morning is uh, going well thus far, and uh, mine is always exciting when I, I start off doing these cartooning sessions or the illustration sessions. So um, I uh, this is really interesting to me, and I ho hope it will be to you. It's certainly something that, um, from the time I started cartooning, it was uh, something that I ch challenged myself to do, and that was to uh, create a very action-oriented type scene or a, or a, an image, and um, I tried to introduce a little physical, little physical action into all my cartoons, even the gag cartoons. I thought uh, um, I'd seen enough of talking head cartoons to. Um, I thought I could really add to them if I, you know, added a little acting and a little uh, movement. Uh, even a, a hint of movement. It doesn't have to be moving. It just has to look like it could move or uh, that it, uh, there is movement going on in the, in the story or in the, the idea that you're trying to portray. So uh, today I wanted to uh, start by uh, talking about uh, action, the, the use of action in storytelling or in, um, in a comic or in any kind of illustration. It's, uh, it's pretty, um, it catches the reader's eye if you have something going on that you that attracts your eye and movement is something that that catches our eye as a, as a reader or as a, an observer of uh, of the image that we're looking at so uh, I had um, challenged myself to uh, try to do something that would be um, would have a character off balance and um, how to how would that look and I challenged myself to uh, do a a little action drawing of um, of a baseball player, basically, and um, winding up for a pitch. Now, this is like a really old school baseball player, probably from the late 1940s or maybe even from the late 1930s. And the the old wind up pitches they had back then, the um, which were, I think we don't see this anymore. the the pitch The pitching in baseball is quite a bit different. Uh, more for for power than trying to trick the batter and uh, the, the power and the, the tricking is all together because the batters have improved their game and of course the pitchers have really improved their game to stay ahead of them so but in the old days they used these kind of um oh i don't know and this was all basically showbiz and, and theater too right there was a oh he's going to pitch now and he would exaggerate the movements to um to to wind up for the pitch so it was it was uh, a way of drawing all the attention to what was going on in that spot because you 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 have to think that in a baseball diamond or in a baseball field there's so much going on there's so many people there and how do you how do you attract the attention to this one spot so so first of all the the, the pitcher himself would would attract himself to the action and then um and then, you know, once, once he had the attention of the audience, he would follow through with the pitch. And, of course, especially back in those days when we didn't have television and, um, and film, and they did, there was no way to know what was going on unless somebody basically acted it out. So uh, what I have here is uh, let's study this character that I've done here. We know we've got a pitcher. The baseball is uh, in this area here of his hand. Just circle that. And the whole movement of the cartoon, if I can just uh, change this a little bit, and we'll just kind of uh, thicken the brush a bit here. I'll just try to follow through with the movement. I'm just going to do a separate layer here than that. So here's, here's the movement here. We've got 
the, the body is moving this way. Okay, so there's this is the movement, and then we have this cross action here. And the way the way it's going to follow through eventually, if we take out the these two layers, it's going to follow through this way. So it's going to be like a whip action. It'll be um, let's create a new layer here. So the the, the end of this will be this way. So what happens in this is that uh, this arm goes this way, this arm goes this way. The body is going from here to here, basically. So it starts here. We'll just do a crossover here. So we have it starting. See here, the top part will actually switch places here. It'll kind of be like a whip action. And it will, okay, let's just change colors here. This, this might be the way to show this. Um, so we, we have like a whip action here where the, the movement has gone this way. And uh, and the whole action is going forward this way. So th this particular one is going here and following through to here. And... Uh, and the, the main part of the body is basically like a like a um, well, like a, a whip or, or something that's flexible. It's flexing this way. So this is what we're trying to show in in a, in a static drawing, which is really a challenge. I think you'll agree. But the way we actually do it is to pick a moment of that movement and decide this is this is going to show uh, what's going on. This is what I need. This is the image I need to tell my story um, because, um, yeah, you have to choose that. What part of the storytelling is this taking place in? Because you know the whole movement is going to be integral to the story, but where, what point are you are you telling about? So I, in my opinion, the, the best way to do it is to go back to bef just before the actual event and, and the pre prep for it and the kind of poising for it. And uh, you see that in old photos uh, of, of baseball. And it certainly, it, it will stick in your mind. And, and I will show you, this is just something came, I took out of my head. But then I went and uh, got an actual photo of, a, of the great Dizzy Dean, who was a great baseball pitcher back in, in the Major League Baseball back in the 40s, 30s. Uh, and he was one of these guys that had this big kick before he made the pitch. And it was... Uh, it was a you know largely theater for for the the game of baseball and it was what um, what drew the crowd's attention to okay he's going to pitch now basically so what we could do here is just study the um, the movement I'm just going to open up a new layer here so let's study the balance of what he's doing here so this let's say this is our fulcrum here so let's put an X there. One leg here, one leg here, but the the whole movement is um, if, if we have a right angle here. Let's imagine this is our right angle of, of the world. <laughs> so he's actually back here. He's actually leaning back this way. The idea is that he's he's moving back this way, but the goal is that he is going to be coiling this way very quickly, and that's um, very very much the, the movement of the piece here. So you can see that there's, it's almost like a triangle or a, of movement here. We've got uh, here, here, and here. And an open spot here. And the layout or the composition of the photo, it, um, it leaves the, um, I don't know, it leaves an opening there for you to project in your mind uh, what the follow through will be. And, that, and that's a, a really good way to look at uh, doing action, action type drawings is that um, there, he's off balance. He, if he if he's just standing like that and and he's not he's not leaning back and pushing forward, he'll just fall down. But because he's uh, in the in the the rest of the motion is he's leaning back, uh, basically um, anticipating the movement forward, and then the 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 fall follow through forward, and that's where you get your action from. So let's let's even take Dizzy's photo out of here, 
and uh, we could just basically do a rough sketch of just a, a stick man doing it, of, of doing the, the whole motion here. Let's just do a rough, very rough stick man here. And uh, hand down here, the other hand here with the glove on it, uh, ready to pitch. And there you go. You've got your, uh, you've got your movement there. So even just the stick man pose is, uh, is got the, the lion's share of what's going to happen in this photograph. So what we do after that is to build, build on the framework we have here. So I'm going to just build another layer here and, and just add a little, a little more detail here. So we've got the head here at the top. I'm just going to turn my uh, camera here to show you what I'm doing here. And uh, we've got the... Let's see, let's move that camera up a bit there. So again, we have the um, the head here. So we're going to just do a basically rough. We're going to build it like um, the chest and the and the um, torso here. Uh, the arms are here. We'll, we're just going to do tubes for now and, and kind of blobs for the hands and, and glove. And uh, kind of tubes here for the leg. For the uh, right leg, which is uh, on the ground planted, and then the left leg, which is raised here. So you've got uh, a fair bit going on here, and again, you have that that off balance look. But um, it looks like he's going to fall back, and and to exaggerate it, to give that exaggeration, we're going to just take away this uh, with our eraser. Take away this this leg here, and we're going to give it a little bit of um, a, bow, a bow. I guess you'd say a bow effect here. It's kind of bowing back here. So there's a bit of pressure here. You, you notice that it's kind of wowing this way. That's just a little bit of exaggeration we need to follow to show that there's going to be a follow through of motion this direction. Okay. So this is this is part of what uh, what we do is we're trying to to be, uh, indicate for the reader what the movement is going to be and and to exaggerate it especially in cartoons this is this is our bread and butter um, is uh, exaggerating it to to get the point across and and it also has the added benefit of of catching the readers uh, or or the onlookers attention too and uh, then we can add it here and of course we our rules about uh, there's where the baseball cap would be in this area here, and then the eyes would be in this area, the nose and whatnot, and you could follow through with that. So, so that's a, just a basic um, start there for this particular drawing. And and we've added the um, what you can do too is maybe make this arm a, a little longer, or you can. And of course, in the 40s and 30s, they had the big baggy uniforms on. You can add that to it as well. Have the baggy pants. <laughs> Have fun with that. You can add fun little details like that and really, really make it a great, uh, a great piece. Okay, so that's the um, that's the baseball player that we had in mind there. And uh, I also had an idea for uh, the ladies. This is a a photo I found on Google Photos that of a lady doing some martial arts here, or like um, mixed martial arts, maybe. Uh, obviously. Um, doing a pose here. I'm going to add a layer and we're going to do the same thing as we did with Dizzy Dean. And we're going to, uh, with red pen here, we're just going to follow the, the movement here. Now this is a little more, um, straight on to the camera, which is great. So I'm just going to basically do a stick figure type of, uh, drawing here. Arm would be here, the arm here. And the other hip here, so. Okay, so we'll just take a look at that in a second. So let's take the photo away here and see what we what we come up with. 
Okay, so this is really an awkward looking pose from, from that angle. But uh, when you start adding the flesh and bones to it, it won't look so unusual. You, you could also put a little, uh, it might be wise to put a little rectangle in here to show the, the hips are actually a pretty uh, solid mass there. And now to exaggerate that, that's from a photograph. Um, well, how would I suggest we exaggerate that? Well, I might suggest that we um, we just play with the uh, the movement here in the in the back and the um, in the legs here in the head. I think I would tend to move the head a little forward, tilt it a bit. I might just bow the back a bit more. So what I'm doing is I'm coiling the body this way. I'm coiling the body so it is ready to strike the opposite direction. So it's coiling this way. It's kind of coiling to the, toward the left side, and it's going to draw your eye to um, plan for it to strike the right side. And I, I think it's very interesting how this person has uh, got perfect balance here. This is this is actually a pretty good balance pose, but they're they're obviously kicking toward this direction and they will probably land somewhere over here. So that's, that's just from looking at the picture and how, how they're off balance and how they're, if they were to be balanced, uh, let's just do another layer here. If they were to, to be balanced, we would see um, probably a similar pose, but this leg would have to be over here to balance it, the figure. Could have the, this leg could be exactly the same place. This arm could be exactly the same way as well. But if you have the leg here, you see the balance point comes to about here. So it's offsetting the whole body. And uh, it's the left side is balanced with the right side, basically. So to keep this pose, they would have to basically do this. Uh, basically lean toward, uh, have the foot a little closer to the left. And that balances it because you've got this body coiling to go right. So it's it's trying to keep its balance there. So let's take that out and let's go with this one. With this, uh, the original pose, basically. We'll go back to the, the lady again here. We're just going to take that layer out. The, the sketch layer. We'll, we'll try to examine here what is um, what is going on in the body. So you have the coiling body here in the midsection, and then you have uh, let's just build another layer here, and then you have the, the leg kicking up, kicking uh, straight out and up, and then you have this leg here that's that's uh, tilted and, and off the ground because of following through with the motion here. And uh, uh, completely off balance, but in, in total action mode. And the movement of the, of the sash, of course, is, makes it pretty interesting too. Uh, so the, the movement will be, uh, let's see if I can get this to be red here. So the movement has come from here, out here. Okay, so what has, and, and in the same token, the, the shoulders have gone from here to this way. This has gone back this way. The back has gone from straight to tilted. The hips are tilting this way. This leg is going up here. This leg is bent and, and basically balancing the other leg as it, as it goes through the motion. This arm here. And the other arm backwards, but the hand back around the face area here. And you've got uh, got this great motion going. And it's, a, and it's, a, it's a really good photo. It's a, it's a really good thing to practice. So let's try to uh, see if we can reproduce this movement just by uh, drawing it, redrawing it again. Here, I'll use the uh, the pencil mode here. 
for drawing because um, I, I just find it easier for myself. And I use the blue pencil, as I said, because the, the blue seems to work best for me. So we're just going to use it out of our minds, what we've, what we've looked at. So we're going to start with the head, of course. Just got to tamp that down a bit, the pencil line there. So we're going to try to look at what we've seen and see if we can reproduce it. So we've got the head and the shoulders, the neck. We're just going to kind of build what we're seeing. So we're just uh, kind of building the framework here. We've got a, let's do a triangle, or sorry, a rectangle for the hips, base of the hips here. We'll just draw a little joint here for the for that part of the leg. We'll, we'll do a triangle for the foot here at this point. And we'll just basically make it a tube here. And we're just trying to find the, the basic movement here tubes and uh, joints. Let's just zoom in a bit here. Get a little bit. Uh... Now this leg is a little different than the other one because it, it actually crooks in the middle or it actually bends slightly in the at the knee joint here. And then at the other end, it, uh, we have the triangle kind of built this way and then we have the toe bent here, sort of the uh, foot bent into a motion here. So it's cropped here so we uh let's have a look at it it's, it's not bad but i think we could i'm seeing that it's uh not balanced somehow so there's a lack of balance in the upper part of the body so that's something i need to work on here and we can refer back to this photo again and see what she's doing here okay so i see i did not study as well as I thought I did, that shoulder movement. This is the great thing about studying with photographs is that you can you can go back and refer to them again and uh, and, and get it down. So we, this shoulder was a little too far the other way. I think this one might be right if we just kind of play with this one a bit. So we have this shoulder here. Yeah, I just forgot again. Yeah, just there we go. So this, this hand I had to the to the side. It needs to be out here more. It needs to be in this area here. And you know what? I think it needs even to be more exaggerated more in this area here. This this needs to be more here. Use the tubes in and we can use the triangles or the rectangles here. I think I like that one better and then the the arm and uh, this way arm closer to the head I think I I did notice that that when I looked at it the last time it was a little closer to the face and um, and I think maybe the head it needs to be in a different position as well because I'm looking at the motion, uh, it's still kind of uh, off balance here. We need to put that head in a better position here. I think maybe we'll just pull it ahead a little closer to the, to the feet here, and it gives it continues with that whip action that we've been we've been dealing with here. And I'm quite a bit happier with this. It's uh, it seems to be more. It gives more of that idea that we're moving forward, and this foot is going this way going straight out there and there you go so that's that's a rough sketch and of course we can build on that let's let's add some of the details to it with our red pencil I find the red is great for um kind of finding the where exactly the line is and where exactly the figure is and we'll uh we'll add some details to it here and we'll have a maybe a 
a little bit of hair showing there as well. Just to build on the, the, the tails a bit more here. Shoulder would be about here. And the arms would be like tubes in this area here. And of course the leg we could start to put a joint on it now and start to put in the muscle and the bone and, and tissue there and there we go and then we it's starting to come together here you, you're starting to see the the movement coming together and i'm going to do it so that it looks like we're looking through her body to see where the the joints are that are hidden and um and uh because that helps us when when we can see it at this point where where the the obscured body parts are. It helps us to, to follow through with motion, I find. Um, when I, whenever I would work on an animation project and, and I had to do a model, look at a model sheet or I had to use it, and I had to use it from different angles, I always would um, pretend I could see through it and uh, pretend that I could see behind it, behind the like that the, they were invisible, but I could, I could still see it, but I, I could make out the, the de details that were obscured actually by uh, the mean drawing. So it was so that I had an idea what the, what the volume was behind it and the volume of the body and the, and the movement as well. So that's, uh, that's why I do it that way. And uh, when you've got it the way you want it and there all the volumes are the, what you like, you can just use your, your eraser tool and take out the stuff you don't want. And you've got the basis of a pretty solid action drawing here. And uh, we can erase all these rough lines. But of course, the beauty of, uh, of uh, Procreate is that you can just um, just get rid of a layer that you don't want in the, anymore and just get, you know take, take it away. So erase it or even just eliminate the whole, the whole uh, line. And so there you go. And... Um, action is um is is very important um we could even have um it, it, you know when you think about what she's doing here you could have um my thinking is that you can make a gag cartoon by putting something else going on in the cartoon uh you could have um <laughs> let's just just have a little fun with this uh, because um, uh, we're just doodling, we're just sketching, we're finding, we're finding ideas. That's something I I do a lot of time, and a lot of my time is doing stuff. So I'm going to just draw like a cash counter in a store, and uh, uh, draw somebody back here. A person. Maybe a lady in a, in a retail store. And this will be sort of an, a reactive action. So her action is like, she's backing off here. So her action will be a reactive action. So it'll be um, maybe her hands on the counter here. Her eyes widened, I guess, because she's reacting to what's going on here. Yeah, let's let's make her a little more. I think it, it would be funnier if she was a little classier here. I think I just have like a uh, like a, a store uh, like a convenience store clerk or something. But I might just make her like um, I don't know, maybe a jewelry store clerk. So have her with a little more, maybe a little more um, bling on. <laughs> And um, a little more fashionable clothing, maybe, maybe maybe some big set of earrings on here, and um, maybe have her face a little more surprised looking here. 
So let's let's have fun with this. And then the, the have her have a balloon coming from her mouth saying something. And uh, we'll just use a, a black pen for that. And again, this is something you're just, uh, we're just trying this out. This may not be your joke, but um, she could say, this is my favorite part, we're coming up with a punchline. No, I don't even like that line. I, I, I go through this a lot when I do this. Um, try to think of the, the line that's funniest, that's the quickest and the punchiest line. Uh, okay, okay, we'll underline that. Okay, okay, we'll pay the HST. Just let me live. So it's, it's things like that. You, if you're like me, you will look at the drawings and you'll find the find things like this all the time. It's uh, it's a lot of fun here. Let's see how are we doing for time. We're doing good. Okay, so let's uh, so we could do that with the Dizzy Dean cartoon as well. Let's just take that down and let's look for a gag for for Dizzy Dean here. Uh, if we can find that drawing. That was quite a while back. There we go. Okay, let's take all these out. And uh, Busy Dean cartoon. So we're we're going to just uh, restage that, which is the wonderful thing about um, Procreate is that you can reduce, enlarge, uh, move it around. I, I do it all the time, and I've gotten kind of spoiled. I, when I was... Uh, Old school, when I had to put it on a piece of paper, it stayed there. It had to stay there on the sheet, and you get kind of spoiled doing it this way. Um, I think it would be quite interesting to do it this this way and have, um, have a, a new layer here, and then we'll have... Um, we're going to draw a batter. Just going to do a quickie little line drawing of a batter, which is, I don't know, I, I, I'm not as good at this, but for a gag cartoon, and we're demonstrating something here, it, it, uh, just, just ha we're just having fun with it. So it, it doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to get the point across. So we're not we're not looking for a perfect drawing here. We're just we're actually looking for a good gag. We got a baseball batter here. And he's saying something. We'll have the catcher here. We'll just have a basically a. Oh, didn't want to do that. Undo. And we'll go back here and we'll go back to the, uh, the line here. We have our kind of a catcher bird cage mask here. The bill of the hat popping out here. And then we have the, the glove here.
And the punchline for this one is going to be interesting. And the punchline here is, I wish he'd wear his glasses in the games. He's obviously, he's pitching the wrong way. Then you can have fun with this when you know, the, the whole idea of humor is that you can, you can take an idea that you see every day and you can do a twist in the story. You can change places of things. When you add elements, you're always adding a chance to, um, uh, to, to create an, an anomaly or um, uh, an irony in the, in the story. And the idea being is that he's here he is, he's making a beautiful pitch, but he's, he's looking this way. He's going this way and the batter's over here. <laughs> I wish he'd wear gla his glasses in the games uh, along that line. So the, the whole idea being, um, so that's, that's how you can create uh, action, make a beautiful action drawing, and then add some, just some little touches, and you can create a really different type of gag cartoon as well. And of course, you could have um, other stuff going on in the background, too. Adding elements is really the best part of, of, um, of telling stories, um, of, of telling a story in a pic uh, picture. I think uh, if you study um, the great Norman Rockwell, um, that's apparently how he did his, his paintings. He would sketch, um, and he would add elements to it. It would, it would start with a, a girl, um, standing by a street lamp and then a sailor walking by and, and, um, his mind f figured out ways to create a, a very interesting story. And he told, he was a ver very well known as a storyteller, as well as a great illustrator. The Amer he was called America's iconic painter. America's iconic storyteller, even though he never did comics that I know of, uh, he, he was well known for his storytelling. And, uh, so I, uh, I think I'm going to end it there and just, uh, talk a little bit about the, uh, yeah. Talk a little bit about the, the, uh, the posing it's, it's just a matter of studying your, uh, studying your action. You can use photos, you can use film, you can use live models. It's, um, it's a lot of fun and, and it's, it's a, another aspect of creativity you can use. And I think I'll turn it over to Tom now. Perfect. Perfect. Thanks, Jeff. That was, that was a fantastic, fantastic session. session. Really uh, enjoyed that. Um, and uh, yeah, I just want to let everyone know that uh, we have our April session coming up. Uh, so definitely uh, sign up for that. You can uh, check that out. That's on uh, uh, through our website, through the Eventbrite. So hopefully you can uh, keep joining us uh, April. Uh, then we're going to be posting some of our next sessions as well. So do uh, stay tuned. We'll have, uh, you know, uh, April, May, June. We'll keep these sessions on Saturdays. Uh, first Saturday of every month is basically what it, what's happening. So, uh, again, I want to thank all our uh, partners in this project. So we have uh, the Canada Council for the Arts, and then we have our library partners, Blue Mountains Public Library, Collingwood Public Library, Wasagi Beach Public Library. Thanks for joining us. Thanks to Jeff. And again, you can take out the iPads with Procreate at all of these library partners. And this will be available to rewatch uh, once when we're done here as well. And then do check out our YouTube channel. If you go to our website, you'll be able to access our YouTube channel. We have a lot of uh, past recordings of workshops available too. Uh, you can email me, Tom, at tbmcs.ca if you have any questions. And I look forward to seeing everyone next session. All the best and take care. <laughs>